Good morning to all our leaders in PNG. So this is again your coach Jesmar Gregory. I'm based in the Philippines, and today our topic is the five finger skills of multi-level marketing or network marketing. All right. So we're going to talk about the basics. So most of the people have been struggling in the the business that we are doing. So might be they don't know the the basics on how to start the business program. All right. So this will be the next step after you join. This will be the the five basic skills you need to master on the business. All right. So we're about to start, and we're going to discuss more of these five finger skills. Why people fail while people get successful in the business. All right. So. We're going to welcome you on our training for today and discussing about the five finger skills. All right, let's move on on the five basic skills. Number one is the prospecting. Number two is the inviting. Number three is presenting. Number four is the closing skills. And number five is the follow up. All right, so those were the five basic skills you need to master in this MLM industry or network marketing industry. All right, so those were the five. And for us to discuss more about the the five basic skills, let's go on the first skills, which is prospecting skills. All right. So prospecting skills is the first process, identifying the potential client, or customers, or what we call prospects. All right. So prospecting is like a diamond. So you know the value of diamond is very expensive, right? It's very rare. So when you find prospects, they were very rare. I mean, the people there. There are a lot of people. I mean, there there is a um, huge population in PNG, and the prospects are just uh, around. All right, and. Most of the people they they fail in the business not because they understand the business but because they fail to do how to do prospecting. All right, so prospecting in every person is a prospect, and you can do prospecting anytime, anywhere. At least you can make your own prospect list. All right, so to sum up with, we got these ways on how to do prospecting. Number one, family tree method. All right. Number two, M A N Y or many method. Number three is hot and cold method. And number four is referral method. And number five is evaluation method. All right. So all you need to do, all right, if these uh, methods have been resonating you. Or you find it more efficient or effective later, or it corresponds on your skills. All right, you can use it. Or later part, you can upgrade which skills you need to master. All right, so decide which methods are you going to fit. All right, so that you can put them on work every day. Okay, so we're going to discuss more about the family method. All right. So this family method, you just need to trace your family tree. It's either your one talks. I mean, it's either your your mom, all right, in the side of your mom, you get your grandpa, your aunt, your cousin, your uncle, all right, cousin blue you, okay, and on your dad's side, yeah, you get your grandma, you get your cousin, you get your aunt, your uncle, all right. So extended families, extended families blue you up, all right. So all you need to do is to trace and at least somehow figure out their contacts, all right? Or you can you can make a family reunion for them to be get connected, all right? And you can trace up, uh, you can get their, their their local number, all right? And you can set for a family gathering meetings and introduce them the business. So that's how it is very much easy. All right, that is the family tree method. You just need to uh, somehow trace, all right, trace the family tree in order for you to at least um, 
uh, have the connections with the family because this business is a family business. So you need to set up an account first for your for your family before your one talks because this will be your family business. All right. Since this is a family business, you can do it lifetime. You can invest only one time. You can benefit lifetime. All right. And the next method is the M A N Y, which is the many method. All right. The M stands for means. A stands for authority. N stands for the needs, and Y stands for why, or deepest reason why, okay? So let's discuss about means. Means is their capability to join, all right? Regarding with their financial background or their profession, all right? So in order for you to, to, to have at least a great number of signups, all right, we use this method. This is a powerful method we've been using in the business and means is one of the, um, the great way for you to, to, to gain signups, all right? In order for you to, to, to have more signups, you just need to know the financial capability, all right, of those prospects that you have. All right. More importantly, they are professionals, all right, or they are earning good salary. It's it's fine. Okay. Let's move on the next, which is the authority. All right. So authority, those who have huge connections, such as leaders of organization, church leaders, CEOs, all right, politicians, all of those big plan leaders do you in the community, all right, that they got a very wide connection. So you can really introduce them the business once they sign up for sure, they got a very huge connections, all right, they, they can possibly join your business or your team, okay. And the next is know the needs of the people. All right, it's either they lack financial capacity or they lack the healthcare facilities. I mean, the access to healthcare facilities, you know, in, in PNG, all right, in other provinces, we have a lot of issues, especially healthcare facilities. So for you to, to be able to, to connect with them, all right, those who have been uh, looking for products that they can at least somehow save their health, all right? You can really get connected to them, okay? By way of introducing our products, which is very much efficient nowadays and very much essential, all right? And the next one is the deepest reason why, okay? The why. Those individuals that are highly motivated, you know people highly motivated, those people have been, um, uh, really very much want to get successful and people who are very desperate all right on their situation this time to to be successful and to help their families all right those people who have very much deep deepest reason why on how they're going to uh, to be successful okay that every um that every job, that every opportunity that comes in them, they really grab it. Those were those people who are really going to get successful. All right. So those were the methods of many methods. Okay. Let's go on the third one, which is the hot and cold market. All right. The hot and cold market, we have these three classifications. Number one, the cold market. Okay. Prospects that are not aware of the company. It's either the products or the services. Those where they don't really uh, have, they don't have the idea, okay? Those were people's uninformed. They, they were called uninformed people, all right? Warm market is the prospects that you've known for so long and establish relationship with them. Sometimes this, this warm market, all right, just... Uh, being uninformed or misinformed people, all right? Because 
sometimes when you you are uh, close to to people they don't really uh, uh, i mean they don't really uh, understand the program they don't really want to join because you are already there or they uh, sometimes uh, those warm market or close people relationship has the biggest or a highest tendency of rejection all right do you agree with me sometimes you can get rejected by your husband sometimes you can get rejected by your wife or your family or your friends or even your best friend okay those were warm market and also on the third classification the hot market okay prospects that have been invited already repeatedly but failed to decide okay this is the those hot market so those hot market all just need to do in order for them to sign okay just give them the benefits and the chances to get successful here in the business and know their needs once you know their needs okay can really make them sign up all right so we, get, we do understand it. Okay, let's move on the next one, which is the referral method and the interview method. Okay, referral method is the strategy through extension of people. All right, who know who? Okay, let's say if I'm going to, to, to ask you something, let's say uh, to your one talks. All right, to your one talks, I'm going to you to ask something, let's say. Um, I'm going to ask if you know someone who has the um, who has the difficulty in their health, or let's say they got diabetes, they get high blood pressure. All right, do you know someone who has high blood pressure? That's the referral method. They can refer people. All right, who know who? That's the concept. Okay, so people with several connections who are in need of your products and services or the opportunity itself. So this is the extension of people, all right? It's more likely a third party approach. And the, the next one is the interview method. This is usually a form of paper that looks like an interview form, all right? And you can approach some questions to those interviewees all right that you want to ask them let's say you want to ask them if uh within the family all right in the interview within the family who among you have the diabetes the high blood pressure can list them down all right once you know that there is a huge number of high blood in the community then you can refer them to see 24 7 or the products all right so those were the interview methods and the next all right, skills we need to master here, okay, after we, we talk about the prospecting is the inviting method. In inviting, remember to use keys. Do you remember your first keys? <laughs> okay, it's not about it, okay? So keys is the shortcut of keep it short and simple principle, okay? So that's how it means of using KISS principle, okay? When you are inviting, the rule number one here, in inviting, you are not presenting. Sometimes the most failure of those distributors or those leaders, okay? Once they have been inviting, they are already presenting the prospects. So the, the, range, the range of uh, the rejection is very high. So once you are inviting, you are only inviting, you focus on inviting, all right? Don't present, okay? When inviting, you just need to keep it short and simple and in hurry, okay? Which means that uh, there is sense of urgency, okay? How to invite, okay? You can use number one, direct approach, okay? Use when you are inviting people the opportunity directly, all right? Direct approach, you ask them if they've known AIM Global already, I can invite you in AIM Global, all right? Or the ED plan, 
uh, opportunity, all right? That's the direct approach. And the number two is indirect approach. Use when you are asking about the prospect for help or input or guidance. Let's say um, you are asking an architect or an engineer because that was their profession, all right? So who among you here, okay, since they, they have got a, a very wide, a uh, very wide connection, okay, all right. The 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 question here, all right, for indirect approach is you just need to ask them, all right, if they know someone who wants this opportunity or wants to have an extra income, all right. So that's indirect approach, and. We have also the next one, which is the super indirect approach. This is what we call the third party approach, right? Finding out if they knew someone who might be interested in the products, services, and the opportunity, all right? Let's go back to direct, indirect again, and the super indirect to compare. Direct approach is directly, all right? Directly given then the opportunity all right indirect all right you were asking them about help or prospects okay you were asking them connections you get me in super indirect approach all right this is a third party approach finding out if they knew someone who might be interested in the products services and opportunity do you get me so those were the third three types of approach number one direct approach number two indirect number three is super indirect approach so you know those classifications already or you have learned it okay let's move on in the form all right Form is F-O-R-M, which means this is one also of the indirect invitation is a way, all right, to establish rapport through the family, okay? F-O-R-M, which means family, O means is occupation, R means relationship, and M means message, all right? That is the form system. Okay, again, F-O-R-M, all right? Just need to establish rapport with them to ask about their family, occupation, okay? How they are doing this, this kind of pandemic, relationship, how is your wife, or how is your children, all right? And your message to them, all right? Sometimes people wants to hear from you what's their message to them right so use the form principle okay all right the next skills we need to master in the program okay is the presentation skills all right so after you do inviting i mean prospecting you you make an invitation all right once you make an invitation you go now to presentation all right there is the two ways of presenting. Number one is online presentation. Number two is field presentation. All right. Since we are working in the new normal, the online thing is the new trend. Uh, earlier, we used to, to be in the field, but in PNG, I think we can do a, a direct contact with people. So it's okay to, to do field presentation. All right. So... All right, uh, presentation, again, is a process of educating. You need to educate your prospects here in order for them to know about the, the business platform that you are doing, all right? Educate your prospects in the industry that we belong and share the great news about the products, the services, and the opportunity itself, all right? You just need to educate, share them the great news, okay? You don't need to convince people just share them and educate them all right okay 
in the online pres presenting, okay, online presentation, it is a way of presenting by use of internet or online communication medium like messenger, chats through your mobile or phones or gadgets, all right? In online presentation, there is unlimited prospects, okay? You can definitely expand in different countries by using your phone wisely, all right? There is a wide range of unlimited prospects, all right? You can prospect Solomon Islands, you can prospect PG, you can prospect, if you are in Port Moresby, you can prospect Madang, you can prospect Popundeta, you can prospect Hila Province, you can prospect Wabag, you can prospect Lei Morobe, all right? Because the, this time we can really possibly send products to those countries. But when there is a, an office in those countries, then that's a very advantage, okay? So maximize the use of internet by way of uh, using your messenger, your chats, your WhatsApp, right? Through your mobile, mobile phones and gadgets, right? So online presenting, there is a lot of methods in doing the online presentation. Number one is one-on-one -on -one massive prospecting, okay? One-on-one -on -one massive prospecting can be done in the messenger or WhatsApp with our readily made presentation scripts. So all of your coaches or mentors in the Philippines has a readily made script, all right? Presentation, the time you have been invited in the business, they usually send scripts, those were one that you can get from them. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, those are one that you can get from them. Those were readily made scripts, all right? And take note, it is a numbers game. Okay, the more people you present is the chances of more registrations. So all you need to do is to know the ratio, okay, omit the end, ratio, all right? The ratio is 10 presentations or 10 prospects that you have been presented. There is a, 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 uh, I mean, there is a possibility that there is one who is going to join, okay? The ratio is 10 when you present to 10 people and they decided there is possibility that there is one person who's going to join, okay? Take note, one-on-one -on -one prospecting is a numbers game, okay? The more presentation is the more chances of signups, okay? So those were sample of the screenshots of the presentation that we're doing through Messenger, through WhatsApp, all right, all you need to do is to maximize these platforms. Okay, number two, we got this group chat presentation in online presentation skills, all right? It can be done in Messenger also and WhatsApp by way of group, creating groups, all right? But there's also a readily made scripts for group presentation, all right? The maximum number of groups Per presentation is 250. In Messenger, I think it's 250 and in WhatsApp, all right? And take note, you need to add only positive guests in the presentation, in the group presentation, okay? Those people you have been invited and they say yes to attend, okay? So you can maximize the group presentations really and the name of the game is always the numbers game, okay? The more... All right, invitation scripts that you send, the more you can get them in the presentations, in the group chat, and the more the chances of signups. Okay, these were sample of group presentation, all right, that I uh, took a screenshot, and you can really maximize also the same way of how you're going to maximize the one-on-one -on -one online by way of making it in a group presentation skills, all right? And number two way of presentation is on the field, all right? This is really a contact, a personal contact, all right? So this is a traditional way of presenting your business by using market, marketing tools or business kits, all right? Or business paraphernalia, 
hard copies, our marketing materials, our flyers, all right? Through a scheduled seminar, our big group, or one-on-one -on -one presentation, or house part of presentations done in the field or offline activities, all right? This is a field presentation, okay? All right? Field presentation is a one-on-one -on -one field presenting, all right? There is types of pre uh, field presentation. Number one is one-on-one -on -one presentation. Okay, a one-on-one -on -one presentation, right? We is scheduled by 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 your guest or uh, yours truly, or um, it's a scheduled personal meeting actually. All right, or it's a a meet up. Okay. But more importantly, it's a one-on-one -on -one presentation in the field, okay? The skill set you need to master here is, okay, never fear rejections. When you meet prospects, you don't need to fear your prospect, right? Confidence is made through rejections, okay? Don't fear rejections. Meet your prospects, okay? Deliver the, the business, I mean, share the business with them, okay? If you have been mistaken, uh, some, some points or miss some points discussing about the business, they don't even know the business, all right? So just be confident, okay? The more schedule you set on one-on-one -on -one is the more sign-ups you get, all right? This is also a numbers game, all right? Do, do we get Do we get it? Okay, let's move. Uh, I mean, this is also some of the example one-on-one -on -one field presentation, all right? The time I used to have a presentation with uh, one of my PNG leader, all right? Okay, that is some of the, uh, the way we are doing one-on-one -on -one in field. And also, um, you can never duplicate people, all right? Take note of this. You can never duplicate people to do a field one-on-one -on -one presentation once you don't do it, okay? If you are a leader and you consider yourself as a leader, you are also the one doing this, okay? If your downlines or your business partners have seen that you're also doing it, they were going to copy the same. This business it has a domino effect, all right? If you don't do one-on-one, -on -one, don't expect people or your business leaders to do the same if you're not doing it, all right? Do we get it clear? More importantly, it's you. You're the one doing it. Despite of circumstances, you're going to do one-on-one -on -one field all right, so that when your leaders see that you're doing it, they're going to copy and it will have a domino effect, okay? All right, so you just be a good example of that. This is the one-on-one, -on -one, one -on one field presentation, okay? So number two, there is a house party presentation. Not literally house party presentation, it's just like an invitation in the house, all right? It can be done in a home setup, inviting neighbors, all right, to attend your scheduled presentation at home. All right, the skill set here, all right, home, home setup is usually scheduled for a client who doesn't have time to go to the office presentation or doesn't have time to visit the office. All right, sometimes businessmen, sometimes big, big uh, leaders of organi organization, all right, but with personal invitation only. All right, you can do a home setup with them and bring along your, your team and so that you can have a good conversation at home. All right, this is only a personal invitation sometimes. And also you can do a, a group invitation together with those homeowners. All right, so this is also one of those examples of home house party presentation that I've seen from those leaders who've been doing it. Okay, and the third way on how to do the field presentation, these were just the common ways, all right, on how to do the presentation in the field is the big seminar presentations that we used to, to do in the offices, okay? 
It can be done in the office scheduled seminar or personal arranged big seminar with your team initiatives. Okay, I've seen a lot of leaders have been doing it. All right, they do some seminars in Kokopo, they do some seminars in Inga province, they do some seminars in those uh, provinces that there is no offices, okay? Because they, they have initiatives, all right? Okay, the skill set here that you need to master is to enhance good coordination, all right? Once you are in a team, you, you enhance your coordination skills, communication, all right? The second one is communication and the delegation of tasks between the leaders, okay? I remember the time I, I used to start this business, okay? I just be in the back of the stage because I'm very shy. By the time I raise up my leadership skills, I already um, arrange um, chairs, all right? By the time my, my mentors have been doing the business presentation, the time, um, I, I, uh, as the time goes by, uh, I see myself already on the stage, all right? So, um, having a skill set or having a um, trying something new, all right, or not fearing, okay, because you can't do it, all right, is the more reason you want to do it. I mean, you need, you need to do it, okay? When you fear something, is the more reason you need to do it, all right? So I, I really fear to, to speak in front of the stage because I'm very introvert, and I can really speak a lot. I really speak very limited, okay? But the time I, I used to start this business, then I used to, to gain skills, all right? Also, I adapted and duplicated, all right, to those leaders that I have internationally and locally, all right? So the skill set here in having a, very, a successful seminar or a presentation, is having a good coordination, communication, and delegation of tasks between the leaders. Okay, setting up big presentation has a higher rate of signups. Okay, and for sure, it's also a numbers game. Do you, do you, do you agree with me? That there is a higher rate of signups once there is a big, huge crowd, all right? and a big number of attendees, right? Do you agree with me? Okay, let's move on the field presentation examples, all right? Now you can see me all right in the front of the seminars here in the Philippines and see you there in PNG. I'll be one of your international coach that will be uh, there very soon, all right? And those were pictures of some leaders that have been doing the business internationally, all right? Those were in the stage. So this is a big example of big seminar presentations that has been uh, doing by our leaders, all right? And the next one here, okay, is how to close the sale or the closing techniques, right? No matter how good your presentation is, it will not count if you will not close the sale. Again, no matter how good your presentation is, it will not count if you will not close the sale or will not close the deal. Don't be afraid to ask your potential signups if they can be ready to join now or tomorrow. Okay, the time I'm, I'm just doing a presentation, once they understood the business, I'm telling them, are you going to join now or tomorrow? Or even you can ask them, are you going to join now or in the afternoon? I'm very confident about it. Just be very confident about it because the thing here, all right, you can't afford to waste your time having no sign-ups or having no registration. You're given time, you're giving effort. You can't afford to lose a sale, okay? All right, so don't be afraid to ask them if they're going to register now 
or in the afternoon or tomorrow. That would be way better. All right? Because I don't re really, um, I don't really believe if, if they're going to say, okay, I'll join this week, I'll join next week. All right? Those were wasted um, registrations already. I consider them wasted registrations already. Those people who want to register later, all right? But more importantly, the one I consider only is the now, in the afternoon or tomorrow registrations. Okay? That's it. And be always in closing. When you close the deal, you give a good message. All right? You give a good message. What good thing to remember in closing the sale or the deal is you give benefits, all right, and the chances. Again, take note, the benefits and the chances if they started the business. For example, once, um, once you talk to your one talks, how can they uh, benefit from this business, all right? You give them the benefits, all right? And the chances, you know what? If you are having challenges with your finances this time, if you join this business, the chances are you can get successful. You can earn extra money, right? You can you can attain or build an assets, or you can attain financial freedom, right? Or you can buy a new car. That's the chances if they're going to do the business, right? What we're going to benefit from them? I mean, they're going to benefit from this business. This business is a lifetime business and a transferable business, right? It can be transferable in the next beneficiary once we're already, um, once we're already dead. I mean, we're already um, in the next life. This account can be transferable on your next beneficiary or the next kin, all right? Again, by way of closing the sale or the deal, you give them the benefits, how they can benefit from the program and the chances they can get successful here in the business, all right? Do you get it? The next one, skills, is the follow-up. How to follow up? All right, is to apply 48 hours rule, make a follow up with them after they join, uh, they, they have been presented, right? After 48 hours, right, make a follow up with them by way of let them attending NECO or NDO training. Okay, you call them, I would like to, I would like you to, to attend our free training here. You can really understand the how and the why of the business. Okay, if you really know your, your why, okay, the how will be easy. Okay, so you let them attend the NECO training as form of follow-up system. Okay, because in the NECO system, I mean, in the NECO training or the NDO, right, we, we talk about the, the deepest reason why and the how on how to do it, the, 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 the time, they, they have start up the business. This is the next training that they need to attend. Or they have attended the, the ECHO or the OPP. Okay. And you can also make a follow up with them on the Facebook timeline tagging. All right. If you get Facebook, you can actively like or comment or react on their post as form of follow up. All right. And also, you need to get constant communication with them through call or text, all right? Communication is a good way on how to get connected with your business partners, okay? Have you experienced that uh, when you use communications with your business partners, they have already signed up with the other group, all right? Have you experienced it? because you lack communication, all right? The constant communication is a win-win principle. Once someone has already promised you to join their business, okay? 
And the next is add them in your team pages or you request your mentor or coaches to let them be added. Or in the qualifiers group chats, if you have those qualifiers or people who would like to join the business already but haven't signed up yet, but they're very much positive, you can have a qualifiers group chat. Okay? And also, all right, inform them about the promos, the reward system, all right, that the company is updating from time to time, or there is a promo rewards from your group so that they can be follow up. For example, there is the last time we get a additional 15% discount in all product reorders, all right? That's a good way to follow up your prospects. You get me? All right, okay, number one, again, how to follow up is apply 48 hours rule. The next is let them attend the NECO or NDO training, right? Use FB for timeline tagging if you are friends with them in Facebook, right? Constant communication, right? Add them on the qualifiers group chat or the team pages that you have. And the last but not the least is inform them about the promos or the reward system of the team, the company, or your personal rewards once they have signed up. All right? All right, so we've talked about already the, the prospecting skills. For sure, you have learned a lot. The, the, the invitation skills, the, pre, the presentation skills, the closing skills, and the follow-up skills. Those were the five basic skills that you need to master here in the business with AIM Global Business, all right? So all you need to do is to be consistent because your business, again, is a reflection of you. Consistent actions create consistent results. No actions, no result. Okay? Consistency will always be the key. No matter how much you're going to do this business, okay, consistency will always be the key. All right? So hope you learn in my five basic training skills and see you there in PNG. And more importantly is all you just need to do is to be consistent on which uh, skills that you need to master this time. All right. And I wish you also.